Can we take you all everywhere? <laughs> Smelling like cocoa butter can't take us nowhere. I'm a contributing editor at Ink Magazine, and I'm the curator of All the Hats. Yes. Um, All the Hats is um, a channel on Ink.com that focuses on the journey of Black women entrepreneurs. Please check it out. Please support. Um, I would love to thank Ink for giving us the space. Yes. And can we just as they should? Yeah. Can we give a shout out to your your magazine? What's the name of your magazine? Because it's bomb. Right. See, I'm terrible at promoting myself. Oh, we're going to so talk about beautiful. it. Yeah. We're going to make you promote yourself. It's gorgeous. <laughs> um, I own and edit a fashion magazine called Blanc. Um, and she's not talking about a little printout. She's talking about... It's gorgeous. Okay. It's bomb. It's Amazing. Bomb. It's good. <laughs> and it's not even annual. It's quarterly. It's quarterly. 100,000 copies. 25 countries. 100,000 copies. That's hard to do. One of the only black-owned and operated fashion magazines that has partnerships with the biggest brands in the world, including oh, Tiffany, yeah. Gucci. Listen, we can't talk about me. These women are... Well, we won't are... talk about you. <laughs> we have all the time in the world. We're we going to take up space, y'all. Okay? That's what we're here to do. Well, the same man's going to come out and just... I... <laughs> we don't we have all the time. We're going to fight I... him, and we're going to keep talking. Okay? <laughs> Three, I am so excited. Three black here. women and a Pakistani show up to the Ink Founder house. <laughs> and, ain't nobody getting nothing and the bartender okay. says, <laughs> I need to, let me introduce the panel. Okay. <laughs> I have to do her job. <laughs> um, I am excited to be hosting this panel. I'm just going to like let them talk, you know? Uh, but we are going to be talking about how investing in diverse founders pays off. Yes. yes. Um, I want to start by <laughs> your mic. I want to start by um, introducing these incredible women. Um, Arlen Hamilton. <laughs> which launched in 2015. Arlen has invested in more than 195 companies led by underrepresented founders. Is that number different? Underestimated, underrepresented. Uh, we're going to near 200 really, really soon. Yes. All right. Shout out Backstage Capital. <laughs> you also recently launched Runner. Uh, Runner, shout out Runner. <laughs> Runner uh, which is a labor marketplace that connects startups with operational people looking for part-time work. That's yes. correct. You got it. Rachel like Rogers. I like it's fun. <laughs> Of Hello wow. Seven is a lawyer who started her career working with nonprofits, federal judges, and Hillary Clinton. <laughs> yeah. Why bar. does that make everyone laugh? <laughs> I'm like, y'all took it back with this bio. <laughs> I, took, I took it all the this, way this, back. This cool speed up for the 10 million a year. How about that? <laughs> right. Well, I'm going to let her talk about her 10 million a year. Hello Seven is a coaching firm. Uh, specifically working with women who want to take their businesses from 100K to a million. Who is that? Everybody in this room. Everybody Samara in this room. Madani is the founder and CEO of Stacks. Yes! One of America's top 10 fastest growing fintech companies, processing over 23 billion in payment with an evaluation of over 1 billion, leading over 250 employees and over a hundred million in reoccurring alone. software revenue. All right, so, you know, y'all the major players. Um, some would say. Some would say. <laughs> Mostly us. <laughs> 
Okay. And Bloomberg, and Fortune, and Inc. And, 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 and Good Men Morning and America, and, and New York Times. <laughs> okay, so my first question. The average annual revenue of women-owned businesses is $143,000 a year. Mm -hmm. uh, the annual revenue for black women is 24000 a year. Can you discuss that gap and how to find investors, how to uh, motivate investors to close it? Yes. Rachel, hit it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that gap is not because black women are not good at business, right? Exactly. That gap is because of the history of this country, right? And the systemic you know, issues that are in every system, including banking, right? Including criminal justice, everything, right? So because of that, you know, we have a system that is designed for us to lose, but what we gonna do, we gonna win anyway, okay? And how do we do it? By doing things like this, supporting each other, being in community, right? Having boundaries, learning how to toot our own horn. I think that's part of the problem. That's something that Arlen has really taught me as well is you, you gotta say, listen, put some respect on it, okay? <laughs> Let me give you the resume, because no, 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 you didn't, you didn't mention enough things. Let me tell you what else I done did, right? So that's what we have to do um, in order to make sure that people understand our value, okay? We have to recognize our own value and then speak it. And we all have that inherent value. We all have creative ideas. And here's the reality. There is a gap in the marketplace always. If you are Black, there is a gap in the marketplace because you have a different perspective that has not yet been represented, right? There are so many different industries that have nobody who is black running a company, right? And so your different wow. perspective needs to be represented, okay? So recognize that, believe in yourself, surround yourself with other people who can support your mission and your dream. And then the other thing I would say is, there are us, right? I am an investor, right? Sunir is an investor, Arlen is an investor. There are investors that look like you who can absolutely support you in your dream, okay? So you don't only have to go to the typical, right? We can create our own pathways of how we build businesses and we don't have to do it the way that the cis straight white boys have always done it, we're right? We're cuter, we're cuter. <laughs> I, cuter. I love that, I love that, Rachel. I'd love to add, so as a woman of color, so I can't speak to being black, but I can speak to the minorities in the room and the immigrants in the room. So yes. I am first generation Pakistani, and I grew up in a beautiful household that was filled with so much work ethic, like so much work ethic. Everything was built off of my parents back and their sacrifices immigrating to America to really have a better future for myself and my brother. And something that was so important to them, they were entrepreneurs, grow, you know, I grew up around entrepreneurs and in business, but it wasn't entrepreneurship because it was sexy. It was a necessity. They weren't educated. And so entrepreneurship for them was born out of that necessity. And something that they emphasized so much was education. And that's one of the reasons why South Asians parents, like you're either become a doctor or a lawyer. And that was kind of my path because you know, for them, that was stability. And that's what they fought, you know, to coming into this country for. But as a woman of color, one, you know, this, there's less, less than 3% of venture capital goes to women founded companies. But for even that statistic, less than 1% of venture capital goes to minority founders. I'm not even talking about women minorities, just underrepresented founders. And that percentage for black and for LGBT and for women of color are in the dot like 0, 0.00 decimal points, not even in the 1%. So as a woman of color raising capital for a FinTech out of Orlando, Florida, um, it was hard building stacks to Unicorn. We actually announced uh, a billion dollar valuation on Tuesday. Thank you. Congratulations. And with our, our Series D funding, we just raised $245 million for our Series D. So I've raised over almost 500 million in venture capital. Um, and twice uh, while being pregnant. So I was, I have two young daughters as well. And so it was not easy. And when you ask like how you get investors to buy in or what that looks like, um, you have to be relentless about, we were talking about it earlier today, Arlen, you have to be relentless about the problem that you're solving, about the mission that you stand for. And you have to be able to see things that others don't, but not give up. Like hard work is the shortcut, but there really isn't a shortcut to success or we don't have that privilege standing up here. We never had that. And it is 10 times, if not a hundred times, 90, what is it? 99% harder uh, for uh, women and women of color. 
So I can definitely speak to that. And those statistics need to change. And it doesn't need to be the 1%. It needs to be 100%. Yes. Arlen, what do you think is stopping the funds from flowing to black women? Uh, racism, misogyny. Uh, we know, politics, but I just needed her to vanity. say it out loud, right? <laughs> That's part of it. I mean, we're laughing, but we shouldn't. Yeah, do, right? I mean, yeah, we can do both. We can do both because right. it is so sad that it's funny. Yes. But that's why I think it's so important. I love that my friends here are representing uh, two kind of two sides of the same coin, which is there is uh, being a baller raising, um, what do you say, $500 million? Can I get a loan from you? Can we talk? <laughs> let's, let, let, let me hold something. Yeah. <laughs> No, there's, there's doing that, and that's like, you know, she's going after stri Stripe, right? I could say that, right? You're going after Stripe. You're going after, like, uh, Decacorn status, right? Yes. IPO, and there, that takes venture capital to, to, to compete. And then Rachel is doing the bootstrapping way, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. there's, there's, I think about leverage, right? Knowing your leverage, part of your leverage is, is not chasing investors. Um, Sunir, Sunir, they start coming to you when they saw your numbers, right? Right. Because she was, I mean, $23 billion that you process. I mean, I don't think anybody's even heard of us still. Yeah. <laughs> like we're, yeah. we've literally been flying under the radar building a company. And I would say that isn't on purpose, by the way. So people are like, oh, I haven't heard of, now people know our names or starting to, but it's not on purpose. We weren't trying to be in stealth. No one wanted to pay attention to me. Nobody wanted to tell my story. Stop? No, I'm here. Yeah. I'm here now. But and it's you, and you stay focused on the key K KPIs, right? Like build a build a valuable business. And the way you build a valuable business is by generating revenue and having strong profit margins. And that's what I've always been obsessed with by necessity because I had kids yeah. to feed and I could not not make money. Like there was no option to just be like, oh, I'm just going to build this for two or three years and then we'll make money someday. No, no, no. We need to make money this month because I got to pay rent. You know what I mean? And that's what it was. And because of that, you know, I own 100% of my $10 million company. Clap it up. And... I, and we will be growing to 100 million yes. and I'll own 100% when it's at 100 million. So know that there are options. You don't actually have to, to, you can raise capital through your customers, right? You can say to your customers, will you partner with me? Here's how I can solve problems for you. Here's what I need you to do. Will you put some money up front? Will you pay the annual instead of the monthly, right? And that can help you to make that capital flow. But you have to be hyper-focused on make, hitting those numbers, right? The revenue and the profits. And you have to be relentless and you can't be shy. You can't be scared to ask for the business, right? You got to go in there and be mad at me. All you're going to do is say no, right? <laughs> but listen, I listen, when you are highly motivated because you have nothing, that is actually a superpower. You think it's a weakness, it is a superpower because you are so focused. No one will outwork you, right? Like no one will outfocus you. And because of that, you will build something very successful. I love that you talked about the hunger. And I think that is truly what makes the greatest entrepreneurs successful. They never lose sight of that hunger. It's not yes. satiated. And I actually think it's the opposite. So I've raised plenty of capital and I just closed on our pre IPO round. And it's, it's necessary in the stage now that I am at a company, but I will say that venture capital is all, I'm going to say it's fucked up. It's <laughs> fucked up. Like it's so glorified to raise capital. It's so yes. glorified to build companies that way. I didn't know. I, I didn't go to CEO school. I didn't go to CEO school. And now I have a podcast called CEO school because I didn't go to CEO school. And that I think that there, there needs to be a shift on focusing on the right things. The reason why I'm noticed now when I should have been noticed a decade ago, Right. The reason why I'm noticed now is because we're taking so much. We're the, we're like the top 10 processor in the nation now. 23 billion in payments flowing through a, a platform that I created. We created that didn't exist. But it shouldn't have to be 20, 23 billion dollars later to get noticed. Yeah, and so I think I, I, it is ridiculous. And I think that that's what needs to change. In people are not sharing stories of underrepresented founders. And this is why I will praise this. This woman over here, Arlen, who from the very beginning has used her, her voice, her platform, not to amplify hers, 
not to amplify her story. It's to amplify the stories of all of us. All of us. And that's what, this is why the few of us that are succeeding are succeeding. We've always, there's, there's so many stories that are untold. I know so many incredible female founders, so many incredible minority founders, so many incredible black founders, so many incredible gay founders that no one's sharing their stories or investing or even get, helping them get started. They're, it's it's almost impossible to yeah. succeed. So and wait, so, wait, wait. Can we talk about that for a minute for the white people in the room? I need y'all to pay attention. White people in the room. We love white people too. We need yeah, white we, people. We, we love y'all, but we also need y'all to share our stories. Yeah. We also need you to put us on the list. We also need you to put us on the cover of the magazine. Let's go in. We, we need you to intro introduce us to the people that you know. Right? And I think what? we all have at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep it together, the together <laughs> everybody up here. <laughs> Like it's five o'clock. <laughs> what would you say, all of you, to that black woman who is waiting for an investor, who is waiting for, Ooh, waiting to be you yeah, right? Don't wait for an investor. Do not wait for that investor. Yes. yes. Choose yourself. Please, please right? say it again. Do not wait for an investor. Choose yourself because when you go out there and you start doing it, right? When you got metrics that are very noticeable, when people can see your success, because to me, I'm like, listen, I'm not here to talk about it. You don't believe me? Watch me then, right? And then when you see my numbers, right? And you see my PL and you see my balance sheet and you see how many customers I have and the size of audience that we have, then you know, right? Then you'll be interested. So let me go get busy doing what I, and I have to say it started that way because I was looking for a job. I graduated from law school and was looking for you know a legal job and couldn't find anything that i really liked that would pay me well and so i started my own law practice and then guess what got all these different offers from firms who were interested because they saw i was doing it right and i had my own book of business that i built so build your own value right like don't wait for somebody else to bless it you bless it and make it happen and that. also pitch us right like <laughs> we'll we invest. we invest we got money like tell us tell us about your tell us about your business i love it i love this i'm gonna what head I, out five minutes early i'm gonna get the car we'll start a line right here for arlen don't do it here i, I actually what i do is i just invest in arlen and then arlen finds the deal so i'm actually i'm, I'm yes, actually winning here yes, yes. um i will say the one thing i want to add to the to the woman who i'm going to speak for i'm going to speak for the for the woman in the room who is looking for funding, I will say exactly what Rachel, you said, don't wait, focus on heads down execution. Yeah. Okay. And I think this is when I talked about venture capital is fucked up. We're glorifying fundraising. We're glorifying the scene valuations. And there's so much capital in the marketplace. When we actually look at sustainable businesses, businesses that are going to leave, like that are going to be around for generations. Those businesses are not the ones that are out just constantly raising capital. They're actually creating great business. And in yes. order for you to create great business, you have to stay heads down execution. That's a reason why nobody knows stacks but you're about to hear our name everywhere right you're about to hear but we've been heads down for the last eight years taking market share away building our product building our platform and creating all of this infrastructure and payments to really revolutionize the way that we're like that everyone does commerce but you didn't know about it for the last eight years because our entire team of 300 individuals has been heads down in building a great business so to the woman out there that is building or to all the founders out, out there stop worrying about raising capital and start worrying about your business because grass is always greener on the other side but then you forget to water your own and it's usually greener because there's fertilizer on the other side <laughs> <laughs> um i want to talk about pitches um what are major no-nos for you when it comes to hearing a pitch uh, for me, it's um, not knowing enough about competition. You not, don't have to know every single one. So I'm an investor. I'm a founder. I understand you're not going to know everything, especially if your head's down. But if I know, if as an investor, I know more about the competitive landscape of your company, it just means that you haven't taken enough time to really do the research, you know? And so like knowing, having that leverage, knowing what you know, and what you don't know, it's hard to do, but coming in with the numbers, coming in with the information, and also knowing, like like I said, what you don't know, being a little bit, um, I hate, to, I, we say humble, and I don't mean demure, but a little bit of understanding, actually, we're working on that. We're trying to figure that out, yes, you know, and that we go through that. Um, and The then, know-it-all founder. Yeah, yes. because that's, that is, 
if if I'm asking you a question, it, it means I'm interested. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I don't trust you or I don't believe you. It means I don't know enough about this. I'd like to ask more. And I see a lot of people getting like a lot of people, they make the mistake. I do this too. I can get really defensive really fast. I don't know if you know me, but I can get really defensive really fast. <laughs> and when I see it not melting away and the founder is kind of coming kind of, you know, really defensive, it, it shows, it, it makes it look like they're hiding. So to stop that. I also, if you watch General Hospital or listen to Janet Jackson, I will listen to you first. <laughs> Rachel, how can standards, okay? <laughs> how can we as black women prepare ourselves for the full-time job of finding financing or investment? Yes. Don't let it be a full-time job. Exactly. I don't think it should be a full-time job. No. I think I think honestly you should make sure that you're meeting people, making those connections, yeah. right? Like coming to places like this, putting yourself in rooms yeah, where there's no such thing as self-made yes. on this on this. All of us have had someone exactly. working with us. It's mostly yeah. peer mentorship, though, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Where your friends are like, let me hook you up, right? Let me tell you about this thing that I just started doing. And let me, you know, let me help you meet this person or make this connection. So you got to get out of the house, I think, is part of it. You have to leave your house. You know what I mean? Be heads down, but also make sure that you I'm are out. Yeah. <laughs> she would she would be like, forget it. Never mind. I'm not building it. But like, but you, but you did at one point, right? No, absolutely. You created and those I connections. On, I was on whenever, I, when the, the moment I could, I was on uh, Southwest flights all the time, meeting with founders because they were my customer. Right. Meeting with people, not just waiting around for the investor to come see me. I talk to investors every single day. Yes. But the other half of the day, I'm out there with my customer. Yes. I'm seeing. I'm keeping my ear to the ground, my finger on the pulse, my hand on my hip. Yeah. <laughs> and a, you know, all of it. Yes. So in addition to that networking, I would also say, you know, being consistent, right? Like showing up, being consistent for your customer, consistently bragging on yourself, whether that's in a newsletter, having a podcast, yeah. having, you know, some video series on YouTube and make sure you are creating your own platform to make sure you are able to share your results with people. And, and, and don't worry about people thinking about, you know, she thinks she cute. You are cute. Yes. That's Correct. Why, that's why she okay. thinks she's cute. Yes. Yes. I, I think I'm cute and you think I'm cute. And we're we're right. all on the same page. All right. Don't worry about what other people think. Show up and speak to the people that you want to pay you and you'll be surprised who's listening. I've been approached by like people who want me to write books, people who want to do a TV show with me, people who want to invest, right? Why? Because I consistently show up and I'm willing to share like, here's the results that we get, right? Here's what we do. Here's how we change lives. Here's the transformation that we're creating. Here's what we're doing in our company. Let me show you how we're failing and let me show you where we're winning, right? I Sharing the whole story Rachel. because people will be interested. And when they're watching, when you have your own platform and your own customers, you get to win, right? That gives you leverage. She talked about leverage earlier. When you have an audience, you have leverage. Rachel, what's the name of your book that's currently out and available in online stores and everywhere? <laughs> You may have heard of my best-selling book. It's called We Should All Be Millionaires and You Should Read It. <laughs> you should read it. It is, it is amazing. Um, okay, so we have to move on to the Q&A part. Um, yes, I actually it. have a question to kick it off from um, Brian Brackeen, who Brian uh, <laughs> is the founder of uh, Lightship Capital. Um, how do you balance between... Um, helping um sorry how do you balance between giving our people the shot that we never had and doing right by your investors i do both every day all day long That's because right. i'm staying first of all rude <laughs> but jam and living their best life though you can't hate on it you can't well i'm living my life will change in momentarily right now, so. um i'm doing it every day by um i this is what I sold to the investor. This is what I said to the limited partners who invest in our fund and the people who invest in our companies. I said, I'm going to be true to myself. I'm going to go look for other founders who are doing the same, who have been overlooked and uh, uh, undervalued for way too long. And I'm going to be outspoken about it. And I, again, I'll say, I'm going to be cute when I do it. <laughs> I just got my makeup done. So I feel real, real nice. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's trophy, but you can be, you can do, uh, well by doing good. And yeah. so I don't think, I don't think of any moment of this as charity, not one moment of it, because 
Um, I am doing all right. I'm going to be really all right in the next few years, and I'm going to bring a whole bunch of people with me. And, you know, we can feel great in our hearts, and we can have all the hugs, and we do, but it's just good business. Right. And the, the truth of the matter is that when you see a, um, a, a, an investor that looks like me or uh, close to that, we could be making more money elsewhere if, if their only job is investing, right? You can be making more money because to start your own fund is like starting 10 companies. Um, but, but, but this is a long game for me. This is where I want to be because I know it will make me filthy rich. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I can invest in other places. How many times a day do I get an Uber sent to me by a white man? <laughs> Love you all. Really like the way you dress sometimes, kind of emulate it sometimes. <laughs> But that's not what I do. Yes. You see, because there's, they're going to be all right if I don't invest in them. So I, I, I don't have to balance it because I am it every single day. That's right. I love that. I'd love to add a few sentences here to that. And I'm going to start by saying something that I always say. And I want you to really hear this. Nothing bad happens when women make more money. Yeah. Nothing bad happens. It's actually quite the opposite. And statistics actually show that women founded companies, they perform better for uh, investments and they perform better in portfolios. And something that we as women do is we make an impact that's beyond just us. There is a huge ripple effect when you invest in a woman Women invest in other uh, businesses. Women invest in other women. Empowered women empower women and their communities and create jobs and create impact. And that's what happens when you invest in women. And truly, when women make more money, it's not, sell it's not for themselves. And there's literally statistics on the dollar of what one dollar that goes to a woman's how much she spends on her community, in her church, in her in impact, then actually when men get the same dollar, it goes into their account and their stock markets. And it, those things are also great, but w investing in women actually creates a better global economy. A statistic that I want to share with you, so we just achieved one of the craziest, like literally uh, a milestone that I didn't even know was possible. I didn't even know that I could create a million dollar company, let alone a billion dollar company. Less than 2% of female founders even break a million in revenue, right? And I shared the statistic with all of you that less than 1% of venture capital goes to minority founders, less than 3% goes to women. But if you actually look at the unicorns that are out there, there's not that many, right? There's a couple thousand unicorns. Um, actually, when you look at the statistics of women founded unicorns, it's actually 12%. So 12% of unicorns, which is which is um, women which, doing more with less women doing Nothing more, here, right? Women doing more. So 12% of unicorns are, are on that list by women, but they are actually allotted so much less of that capital. And so if you look at the statistics, we perform better, not because I think it's, it's, it's what Rachel, you said, it's out of necessity. It's because we're, it's, we're hungry. We want to prove ourselves. And when we have that opportunity, you know, we're not going to let that go. And so nothing bad happens. Uh, when women make more money. And I want to shout that through every roof ever. And we want to invest in more women. And I think that's what needs to change about venture capital. And the last thing that I want to add is that there's a lot of dialogue, right? Which is great. It's nice to have dialogue. We should have dialogue. We're having dialogue. It's great that everyone showed up here. We thank you so much for being here. But Tip what is the what is the action that we're taking actually? And so I was on like every media interview this week every tier one publication sharing this story and the thing that they're like, oh, well now there's all this dialogue. And I'm like, yeah, but what are you guys actually doing to create action in this? So as much as I, we should be celebrating and I, I, I'm literally been in tears this is all week long. Uh, my team calls me the hot mess express right now. <laughs> I will, I will just start bursting out in tears. Um, but, you know, the thing that I posed back to everyone was it wasn't just about like, it's great. I, they're like, how are you celebrating? And I'm like, I'm not. I'm actually mad. I am mad because it should not, it sh this is not what it takes to be a unicorn, right? It sh there should be more of this. And I don't want to be celebrated for a way that tech celebrates the boys club. And I think that there are so many more unicorns out there that are not given a chance. I was just able to break out and, you know, find my way, but there was so much there, there, there were so many times that I should have given up. And there are so many women out there and underrepresented founders 
that are giving up every day because they don't have the life support that they need. So dialogue is great, but we need to focus on the action. It's just because I think we don't make that ask enough. So I'll get started. Uh, <laughs> please check out Stacks Payments. You can follow us on Instagram just to kind of get started. Follow me at Sanira Madani and uh, you'll learn everything about me and the Stacks and CEO School and all the things that I represent. And then from there, if you are a business, which I know all of you are, and you're taking payments, you need to be accepting Stacks. And so ping us, let them, let us know that you, you heard us here um, at Inc. And our team will get you switched over from Stripe. So thank you. <laughs> Listen, take up space, all right? Y'all can find me on Instagram, and if you are an underrepresented founder, you should join um, my program, We Should All Be Millionaires, the club, because yeah. we will help you yeah. build that business to seven figures and beyond. I would say go to hirerunner.co, uh, check it out. Um, go to Arlen's Academy, my first name with an S, academy.com. There are 20 um, experts, including myself, talking about entrepreneurship and investing. It's free. And it's powered by Runner, so anybody can go there. There's no catch. It's not a lead magnet. It's all good. Go run and get it. And, um, you know, look out. Add to my purple shoe collection. <laughs> Just You don't have to pay for it. Just let me know. Send me a link. People, they don't be sending me links. Can I go? I'm going to go. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Do you have your magazine with you? I, I don't have it. Oh, my it's bag. beautiful. I'm, I, it's I'm it's really good. You it's, should support. It's stunning. Yes. Um, Blancmagazine.com. Uh, find us Is on that Instagram. French? Yes. <laughs> it's a Trojan horse. Uh, <laughs> it's going to take a while to land. Yeah, it'll take you a minute. You have to see it. Uh, questions. I need to do questions. We can Please. do questions. I was going to say you can look up there for all the tags if you guys need. Hi. Thank you, ladies, so much for being here today. I'm attorney Nick Sally here in Austin, Texas. I have over 20 years experience in marketing, and then I spent over a decade at Facebook working on intellectual property global matters before going to uh, entrepreneurship full time to run my solo firm. Yeah. So this question is for Rachel. Hey. Hey. <laughs> um, so in your book, you had a particular story around being in a mastermind and navigating politics within that mastermind yes. from someone who was a friend of yours who brought you in, but seemed to want to block your progress to graduate oh, yes. to higher levels. The door is open until it's closed, right? Although you got too big, so now we don't want to help you. That particular story struck me just because of my experiences in corporate. And I wanted to know how did you actually process that once you found out what was happening and how do you sort of deal with that moving forward because for me i think i would be afraid of it happening again and want to save yes. myself that type of yes. of partnership that really wasn't a partnership well i can guarantee you it won't happen again um and the reason why is i'm kind of glad it happened because you know how many of you right have had to be the only you you join a program you join a mastermind and the bigger your company gets the wider the masterminds are right like and so there you're the only black person you're the only black woman in the space and so, you know, there's a lot of bullshit that goes on. There's a lot of racism and sexism in those rooms. Let's be real, right? And so, and we tolerate it because we want to get the information so that we can grow our businesses. And so I'm glad that that happened to me because what it, what it forced me to do was go be like, you know what? Let me go talk to my friend, Lovey Ajayi Jones, right? Like, let me go find Arlen Hamilton. Let me go find Tara Reid, right? Let me go talk to other black women who are out here doing it where I know I'm not gonna have to deal with that bullshit. So let's recognize that we have our own spaces to network in and we have our own doors that we can open for each other. And I don't have to rely on a white man to open a door for me, right? Like I literally do not. So Please I think we need to recognize that. Please open the door when we're walking though. Please open that door. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just know that, and it does require, it is a healing process. Recognize when you are in those places, and you are so mistreated and so undervalued, like that fucks with you. Like that's not a small thing. And that can mess with your ability to keep focused on your company and keep believing in yourself. So you gotta be in spaces where people believe in you. And one of those spaces is we should all be millionaires the club and you should join. Cause you won't be the only anything in that space and you will not be dealing with sexism or racism or any of that bullshit. You will be dealing with only support and cheering for you and giving you the resources and the network you need to build your business. Are there? Oh, yes. We hit 100 million in revenue. Amazing. And, yeah. 
And but it was almost all bootstrap. So my question for you is, bootstrap or venture capital? Which do you recommend? I'm I'm happy to kick off this question. I actually think that there isn't a you don't have to choose either or i think every company has their own path for what they need if you are a service-based business or if you have the capital or if you can do a friends and family i will say the number one thing that you have as a founder is your equity right like it is a um it's it is the most valuable thing that you have but also if you have a product that can truly be in the hands of you know if it really is scalable and you have that passion to scale, venture is is an incredible journey to go on. But don't choose the journey because of what someone else is doing. Every company has to really say where they are in this stage and you know what's right for their business at the right time. I raised venture capital and that was my that it has been my journey at stacks and to take a company public that is the journey but i will say i have ceo school which is an incredible company which is completely bootstrapped right and so i think that every every business should be treated differently and it has its own needs so really take a look at the needs of the business not just what the world is doing or what the world tells you to do i will say um i think the factor is patience do you have the patience to build it slowly and to be consistent and keep showing up and keep getting that market share and keep increasing that profit margin? Like if you have patience, cause you said 15 years, right? To hit a hundred million. Um, Five, so 25 years, 25 years. Yes. Yes. Um, so it takes time, right? I've been at this for a decade. And so it took me 10 years to hit 10 million. Um, and could it go faster? Yes. Like there are definitely ways and there are things that I do now, like the networking in the community and all of that can make it go faster. But I think if you have patience for me, I would not trade it. Right. Like, because I enjoy a lot of money, right? Like a lot of that 10 million is my money, right? That I, that's my salary every year. So that's what's building generational wealth, right? Like that's the money that is now going to my kids that is taking care of my mama she and all horses, of those things. Y'all horses. You got horses? A plethora. <laughs> so I think there's no, there's no either or. I completely agree. I think you can choose the pathway that works for you. But for me, I need to keep my money in the black community. And so I need to own it. Or if I have, you know, investors, I want them to be black, right? Like, and, and I'm trying to create that generational wealth. And so that was my mission. So like, what is your end goal? And how long are you willing to take to get there? I think is the key factors you have to think about. Real quick, I know we're wrapping up. If you look at the two founders here, you see both. You see yeah. venture capital, you see bootstrapping. You can do both. You can, you can do either. You can do either or both. You can first you bootstrap and then you raise VC. There's also crowdfunding. There's also a lot of different things. And I think, you know, starting Runner, we bootstrapped for a while. We raised from angels and, and we now get a decision. We get to make a decision. Do we raise from the crowd? Do we raise from this VC? do we do we go off of bootstrapping yes. when we can get there we get to make the decision i think the, mo the the most important part of this no matter what you choose is putting yourself in a position that you get to choose ahead of you time. get to yeah. choose yeah you get to you get to path. choose and you know That's what i think that is honestly what you're talking about have having those options because you know you could easily raise that money if you yeah. wanted to and you know you could easily just do it yourself right but i think it's the network right you know you have a network of investors you have a network of other founders right like it's that network that is a part of the power that you have so i think building that network is and i key. started building that while i was homeless so yes. like don't don't wait don't wait don't wait that for something not, yeah. to kick it off yeah. I, I will say i think sam is gonna be here any the, moment the cho <laughs> the choose I, I i can wrap up i will say the choose the choosing part life. because i think our stories are so different i think that's what truly i think this is why this panel is so incredible because we each have very different yeah. stories yeah. and i think choosing is the most important for, uh, a part of it you don't have your back against the wall where you need an investor yeah. i actually got my footing i i won a venture plan competition i didn't even know what venture plan was and i won a business plan competition so i took home over two hundred thousand dollars in prize competitions my first year in business because i was like oh I, i'm really good at pitching this business idea is super scalable and i would win first place i was like traveling all over florida just to go get cash and that's that's how I got my first employee and and things like that. And then we ended up doing friends and family. I bootstrapped for as long as I possibly could until we were breaking, until we like were onboarding customers. We knew that we could have gone bigger, but we had options at that point. Yes. In this last round, um, we had over 50 of the top tier private equities um, courting us this time around, right? And we got to choose 
who we partner with on the other side. And it is so important to choose your, your capital partners with the same values. You talked about your values are, you know, these are the values that you want a black investor on the other side. For me, what was important was to have entrepreneurs on the other side, because I didn't want to have just the, the traditional private equity backing. And so I think what's an important lesson for the audience to take away is that there isn't a singular path. And so you know, but being in the position of choosing and being in that position of power and just going for it and you not having to, I never want to be in a position to put my fate in someone else's hands. And that's what entrepreneurship is taking that risk on you, taking that bet on you and you giving it your all. When you ask that question about what makes for a great founder, I want to see a founder that's hungry, that's passionate, that has a greater why, that's willing to put everything on the line, right? I don't like it when I meet founders and they're distracted and they have nine other projects going and they're co-founders of five other things. Like, what are you really passionate about? And why should I come behind you to support you? And I think that investors seek for that and knowing their business, right? If your business um, is incredible, it'll show by the metrics. It will. So if you have a great product and if you have, and you're a great salesperson, like Rachel said, go get your customers and revenue will speak for itself. And when you have revenue, guess what? You get to make the choice whether you want to take someone else's dollar or not. Ladies, thank you for joining us. Such an honor, such an honor to be alongside you ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Um, use the hashtag, I'm like, what? Inc, hashtag Inc Founders House. Um, yes, I did it. I'm successful at that. Yeah. Uh, thank, you so, <laughs> thank you so much, everyone.